Hi, I'm from Sofa Support, and today I'll be discussing data loss prevention or DLP. Data loss prevention helps protect against accidental data loss by enabling you to monitor the transfer of files containing sensitive data. The primary goal of DLP is to ensure that data remains within the organization's control and is not improperly shared out. For example, if a file containing customer data or transaction information is copied to a removable USB drive or is attached to an email, the file transfer can be blocked and an event will be logged. The DLP rules we'll cover in this video are different from email data control policies in the Sophos email product. For more information, a link to documentation on email data control policies can be found in the video description. In this video, we'll explain the basic setup of a DLP policy using Sophos templates, how to set up rules and custom content control lists, and lastly, how to set up an advanced expression. Before you begin, you will need an Intercept X advanced license and Windows OS, as DLP rules only apply to Windows devices at this time. To ensure that the DLP solution will work for your needs, a link to documentation highlighting the file types that DLP can scan, as well as the known limitations with data loss prevention, can be found in the video description. Let's get started. In Sophos Central, navigate to the Policies page by going to My Products, Endpoint, Policies. Click Add Policy to create a new policy. Select Data Loss Prevention and specify the type as User. DLP policies can be assigned per user or per computer. Click Continue. Give the policy a name. Add the desired users you'd like to apply the restrictions to. Under Settings, enable Use Rules for Data Transfers. Select your region. In my case, I'll select Canada and select the template. Click Create from Template. This allows you to start out with a number of predefined rules with included content control lists to monitor for. By hovering your mouse over the I or info icon, you can see the specifics on what each of these rules will look out for. By clicking each of the predefined rules added to the list, you can specify if you'd like to receive email notifications whenever the rule is triggered and add excluded file names or file types. You can also specify whether you'd like to allow file transfer, which is useful if you don't want to prevent file transfers explicitly, but do want to be aware of them. Allow transfer if user confirms, which helps in cases where you want users to be certain the file transfer they're performing is acceptable, or block transfer, which will simply block the file transfer. In my case, I'll select allow transfer if user confirms. Click next rule configuration. Here, all destinations are selected by default, but if there are some you'd like to allow, these can be unchecked. I'll leave the default settings in place. I'll expand the different dropdowns so you have an idea of the available options. Click Finish. You can navigate into each of the different rules if you'd like to make changes to email notification settings or destination settings as needed. At the bottom of this page, you'll find settings for end user messaging and whether or not you'd like to notify end users when a rule is triggered. Click Save once finished. Next, we'll look at creating your own rules. To create a rule, go to My Products, General Settings, and under Data Loss Prevention, select Rules. This will take you to the Manage Data Loss Prevention Rules page. Click Create New Rule. You can choose between New Content Rule or New File Rule. A content rule will scan files for specific strings of text. A file rule will control the transfer of a specific name or file type, for example, database files. In this case, select Content Rule. Give the rule a name. I'll name it Content Rule Test and a description. Enable Send Me Email Alerts if you want to be notified when the rule is triggered. Options are available for you to exempt file types or file names from this rule as well, so that normal business operations are not interrupted. Choose which action will be taken when the rule is triggered. In my case, I'll leave it as Allow File Transfer. Click Next, Rule Configuration. Under File Contains, several predefined content control lists, or CCLs, are made available by Sophos Labs. These can be filtered by region, source, and type. 
I suggest looking through the available filters as many use cases are covered using the pre-built CCLs. Using the drop-down filters, I'll select Canada, Sophos Labs, and Healthcare. Then, I'll select Healthcard ID, PHN, Default. I'll change the filter to Financial Data and select Bank Account Details, Canada. For more details on what this CCL list looks for, you can hover your mouse over the eye or info icon. You can click on the blue text, one or more matches, to define whether you want the rule to trigger when only one matching value is found, or if this rule requires multiple matching values to be present to trigger. Under Destination Is, select Email Client and Internet Browser. Click Finish. Now that my rule is created, go to My Products, Endpoint, Policies, to add this rule to the policy we created earlier. Open the policy we created. Click Settings. Click Add. Add Existing Rule. Select Content Rule Test, which we created. Note, using the checkbox allows you to select multiple rules. Clicking on the rule takes you directly into that rule's configuration. Click Add. Now we can navigate into Content Rule Test to review the settings within this rule to ensure everything is as desired. Select Next Rule Configuration. If you wish to add additional items you like to scan for and block, such as credit card numbers, bank account details, or financial data, you can do so now. Click Finish and Save. You've now finished creating a custom rule. It is also possible to create your own custom content list. To create one, go to My Products, General Settings, Content Control List. Click Add Custom Content Control List. Give the CCL a name and a description. Click Select Tags and add the tags you want to use. In my case, I'll select Canadian Health Service, Healthcare, and Financial Data. Next, specify the matching criteria for the CCL. Any of these terms allows you to enter a term or word that you want to look for. You can click Add to include another term. All of these terms allows you to enter a term or word that you want to look for. But in this case, all terms must be present to trigger this rule. Exactly this phrase allows you to enter an exact phrase that you want to match. This option is not case sensitive. Lastly, Advanced Setup is used to set up an advanced expression. I'll select any of these terms and enter Test as the term to be matched. Click Add and then Save. To set up an advanced expression, go to the custom CCL that we created and select Advanced Setup as the matching criteria. Set the trigger score equal to the number of times the regular expression is matched. A link to the regular expression can be found in the video description. The sample expression we'll use for this demo is shown here. Set the CCL score equal to the number that is added to the total score for a CCL when the regular expression is matched. This should match the trigger score. Set max count equal to the maximum number of matches for the regular expression that can be counted towards the total score. An expression with a score of 5 and a max count of 2 adds a maximum of 10 to the total score of a CCL. If the expression is found 3 times, it still adds 10 to the total score. If you wish to only trigger this rule when the regex is matched twice in the file transfer, you can instead specify the trigger score as 6 and max count as 2. Click Add to create the expression. If needed, you can click Add again to create more expressions. Click Save. To add the CCL that we've created, go to My Products, Endpoint, Policies. Select the policy you wish to add the newly created CCL to. Under Settings, click Content Rule Test, and click Next Rule Configuration. Click File Contains and search for the CCL we created. I'll select Custom CCL Test by clicking on the checkbox. Set up the destination and click Finish. 
the advanced expression is now set up. And that covers the basic setup of a DLP policy. I hope you found this useful. Check out the documentation for this tech vid in the description. For further assistance, view and post questions on community.sophos.com and go to techvids.sophos.com for more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching.